everyone and welcome to this Total War Warhammer 2 information video. Over the past couple of days there has been two very nice images revealed to us via Twitter, Facebook and that sort of thing. And the first and most important one I want to talk about is this one here. The races of the new world. We can see every faction apart from a suspicious faction that... That doesn't exist, apparently. That might begin with S, which has all just been raised. Yeah, they just these don't exist. It's all raised. This is just all raised wasteland. Those ones over there. It's nothing to do with the Skaven. I mean, it's, it's nothing to do with giant rat things. Yeah, they don't exist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's move on, move on, move on, move on. They don't exist, they don't exist. But yeah, the map itself, we can see where all the factions are going to be, we can see where uh, the ones that don't exist are going to be, and I must say, I was expecting something like this, but I'm not 100% happy with it. It just, I look at it and I just go, Ugh! Ugh! No! The no! I mean, it's the one thing that I'm probably disappointed with of Total War Warhammer 2. Because I've looked, spent ages looking at maps of the Warhammer world. I've probably spent more time looking at maps of Warhammer world than I have the real world. Now, I know that they do this a little bit for historical Total Wars, but never on this scale. I know they move things for gameplay a wee bit in historical Total Wars, but it's never been this obvious or to this scale. I mean... Ulfwan's bigger than the whole of uh, Nagrond and etc. The Dark Elf area. Nagaroth, there we go, that's the term I was looking for. Ulfwan's bigger than Nagaroth, and I'm just like, ugh, that's not right. And uh, the whole of the Southlands is not much bigger than Ulfwan as well. It's, it's, and they're positioned like it's a box. Now, I know for gameplay, this makes a lot of sense, and it's the way. They decided to go, but I'm just dis dis I'm just disappointed they didn't make it the map more accurate, but with the sort of um, Empire Total War, where you had those areas on the water of the map where you'd go over it, your army would disappear, and then it'd reappear on this other map after two turns. I really wish they took that more, a route more like that, like they did back in Empire, than they did with this map it just it feel more accurate it make the oceans feel more realistic and they speak take more time it was it just would feel accurate i'm gonna i'll get used to it and i'll get over it this is it's just a little nitpick it's just a little gripe i do not like the layout of the map and the size and shape of things now i know that is just my side of the argument i know a lot of people will be like I don't care if it's accurate. It's not even a real world, so why should they care about accuracy? Um, they're going to say things like that, and then they're going to say gameplay is the most important thing. And I agree, gameplay is the most important thing. It's just, this is a wee bit... It just throws me a wee bit. I don't like it. And I completely understand and where you're coming from, everyone that would say, oh, they'd like it this way, it's gameplay, this, that, and the next thing. And yes, but that is my opinion. The other thing I thought was really interesting when I looked at this is if you look at Nagarith, at Nagar, can't talk today, Nagarith, Rith, Nagarith, I don't think I've ever tried to pronounce that before, Nagarith, Nagarith, where the Dark Elves originally came from, or the Druki, which translates to Dark Ones, the Nagarith Elves. Yeah, if you look where they originally came from, there is a Dark Elf faction on Ulfwan. I expected Ulfwan to be nothing but High Elf factions, but the Scourge of Cain has managed to wangle their way in, in their sort of ancestral homeland there. Then obviously you've got the Nagarith Elves, which is a Aleph and Ar and his cronies, his descendants and so on. All chilling, being Shadow Elves. Yeah, apart from that, I really like the look of the map, faction-wise and all that stuff. 
Um, the other really interesting thing is complete lack of Arabi and Tomb Kings. Now, that is different from what I expected. I expected it to be more in line with Bretonia. But with the amount of detail and effort they're putting into the factions now compared to... Well, Total War Warhammer 1, when the game was released, they put a lot of effort into making the factions diverse, this, that, and the next thing. But then as the DLC started coming out, and then as they started developing Warhammer 2, they took that 10 in faction diversity and they somehow cramped it up. To, cramped it up? Cranked it up to 11. And so I can understand why they've not had the time or money to start sort of like the bare bones Tomb Kings. Kind of like how they had a bare bones unplayable Bretonia at the launch of Warhammer 1. So I can understand how they've not had time to do that. And we've just sort of got placeholder sort of factions and stuff. And I suppose they'll move stuff around. But Tomb Kings, their land is here. So we can almost definitely expect them to be the first uh, new race faction to be introduced. If it is another race is the first DLC faction, I would actually be quite shocked. Because they're the main one left on this map that isn't implemented. And the fact that Arabi isn't here as well, as I noticed other people mentioning on forums, on Reddit, they're a wee bit, oh, we expected Arabi to be an Empire clone faction, but they're not. They're not just an Empire clone. They're not there at all. So does that mean they're getting the same treatment as the Tomb Kings? And the reason they're not here, because they're going to get their own stuff. Their own sort of race, sort of similar to the same way as technically Norska's humans, technically Empire's humans, but they're different races. Oh, actually, it'd be better saying Bretonia and Empire. There we go. Bretonia and Empire, technically both humans, but different races, different units, different buildings, that sort of thing. Is Arabi going to have its own stuff? Because people really expect it to be like Tila and Estalia, how they are Empire clones. But there's no sign of it here. So is it getting the same treatment as the Tomb Kings? Or is it just going to be completely ignored? And it's not like CA to completely ignore them. Because they added Tila and Nostalia. They didn't just put placeholder factions there. And sort of said, oh, they've been destroyed already. Or blah de blah You know what I'm trying to say? They didn't just... Boom, these guys are here instead. They... Put them in as Empire clones, and so the fact that Arabi is completely missing makes me think it's along the same lines of how Skaven was completely missing from the first game, and how Tomb Kings is completely missing from the second game at the moment. So yes, there's the map, and just there's the things I found interesting to do with it. Yeah, feel free to take a look at all the factions. You can. Almost definitely work out what the Skaven factions were if you wanted to. Because um, remember that all the other factions are in alphabetical order. So you just need to think of the Skaven clans in alphabetical order and go, right. What near the beginning of the alphabet has clan what? Clan Nation? Clan Scryer? No. A clan this, clan that, clan. Yeah. And obviously S K A V E N is the a race up there with its enough slots. But moving on to the second thing they release now. And that second one is I just pull it up so I've got a reference and I'll probably read it out to you is this. This is another missive. Now what CA have been doing ever since the release of the Grim and the Grave DLC prior to revealing something big information wise for their upcoming DLC or game to War Warhammer 2 in this case they've had these missives and as I said it started with Grim in the Grave where Helmen Gorst was um, writing a letter to uh, not Vlad oh I can't believe I forgot his Manfred Manfredi von Karstein and that came out about half a week before the big information, like, look, the Grim and the Grave is coming out. First big DLC, this, that, and the next thing, Warhammer, Warhammer, Warhammer. 
And then, ever since then, every time they've had a big reveal for a DLC or the game, we had these missives. So we had one for the Wood Elves, we had one for Norska, we had one for... We've even had several already for Warhammer 2. We had one before the big Lizardmen High Elf battle, and it was a message from one of the elves telling them about the ritual they were undertaking that and the next thing, because that was the very first stage of the ritual. And we now have this one. So now that we've established what these missives are, we now have this one. And this one is very nice, and a lot of people are going to be very excited for what it entails, because this is one of the factions that is definitely most popular. They won pretty much hands down my faction vote for who's going to get to be played on release, because remember on release I'm going to have three factions, so there's going to be the co-op faction, the free let's plays there's going to be the co-op let's play there's going to be the let's play where i choose the faction i play and then there's going to be the let's play where you chose the faction i play and you chose skaven so when i'm going to have another vote once the skaven have been fully revealed and that'll be to decide which faction leader i'm going to go which starting faction which Legendary Lord. That's all one just option because it'll be one or the other. Because which Legendary Lord will decide which faction, which won't change the faction leader, I don't think, but you get what I'm trying to say. Yes. But yes, we're getting sidetracked. This missive. Let's read it out, and if anyone still does not know what it's about, then I'll tell you, I suppose. It should be pretty obvious. To the Castellan of the Imperial Sanctorum, I plead for attendance. No, I, I plead for admittance. I demand to be placed within the safety of your padded walls. Ignore the masters of my order. They know the truth. Yet, I am the only one dare say it. I went down there, as you see, guided by a dwarf's. Guided by dwarf. I'm tongue-tied. I went down there, you see, guided by dwarfs. We went deep. Under the surface, further than the lowest levels of the Karaks. And I saw things, evil things, that stand upright in parody of us. Things with jagged teeth and in... I can't... Uh, in that incessantly chitter. I saw machines that spewed green flame. And, most terrible of all, creatures that shall haunt my dreams for the rest of my days. They live under us in a mockery of our society, but now they look upward. They look at us, Emperor Man... Mandred? Emperor Mandred's bane comes, and they hunger. We are the scraps upon which they shall feast. I am marked, I know, they send killers after me, to silence me. It suits to design that mankind thinks them bedtime stories to scare children but I know they are real and they are coming for me let me in yours Joseph Karnoff former witch hunter and willing patient so yes obviously this is a missive about the Skaven so I would be keeping my eyes glued to CA's information feed areas, their forums, their Twitter, their Facebook, their YouTube. I'm going to be glued on Thursday and Friday and I recommend, because I'm expecting Thursday or Friday, they used to always do it on a set day at a set time, but not officially. It's just more because I followed their information that much. I think it was a Thursday at 1pm everything used to get released, but they've started doing the wee bits here, there, and everywhere. They stopped doing it always at a set time because people like me noticed and we were like sitting there like refresh, refresh, refresh every Thursday. But, uh, yeah, that was back in the Total War Warhammer 1 days. I think it was a Thursday at 1pm. So, but yes, I think this information will be coming a Thursday or a Friday, probably around midday to... Half, between midday and dinner time, somewhere probably in the middle of that. So, yes... 
Thursday, Friday, keep your eyes glued. I will, and I'll get a video of whatever information about the Skaven. We're probably going to get a juicy, juicy trailer. We're probably going to get a unit roaster. And yes. Awesome. So I hope you've all enjoyed this video where we've been talking about those two new pictures. Join me all for the next piece of information probably later on this week. And stay tuned, stay informed. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.